today I'll be showing you how to crystallize a few household products. But first let me show you some examples I have. Here's some petals that I started with. I may crystallize these flowers with borax. Here's another example. I also have some crystallized sugar. and a couple examples of crystallized miracle Grow. But in today's experiment, we'll be using table salt. So let's get started, but first, here's a little explanation of crystallization on the molecular level. Starting with salt molecules, NaCl, we get a pot of water with H2O molecules and we add the salt molecules in. The salt molecules are still bonded together until we add a heat source and energy enters the solution causing the bonds in these molecules to break apart. H2O molecules are still intact but the Na and Cl, chlorine and sodium molecules are now bouncing around everywhere in the solution, not bonded together. When we introduce a cotton yarn into the solution and take away the heat source, the Na and Cl molecules come back together, no longer separated by this energy from the heat. Then we take out the rope and the salt molecules are still attached, bonded together, and we can also see that salt has a very cubic crystal habit, which you will see later when we're done with our salt crystallization. Here are the things you're going to need. A piece of cotton string, about two arms lengths. A little key ring or something heavy to weigh your string down. Preferably non-toxic if you're going to be using sugar to make rock candy or something pencil, something to stir your solution with. I'm also going to be using an artificial flower. You're going to need a jar or some kind of container. I'm going to be doing a couple things, so I have two. I'm going to be using salt because I ran out of sugar and borax, which you can also use. And you're going to need a pot or something to heat your solution in. And of course some water and a sink. I'm going to start by preparing my string. Just hold it out and fold it over. Until it's about this big, maybe a little bit longer than your jar or container. You're going to want to put your key ring through one end here, just like that. Then you can go ahead and put some knots in it to make it a little shorter. This also gives more surface area and the roughness for the crystals to start attaching to in the solution. You one more knot here. You're going to want to make it so that it doesn't touch the bottom but hangs just above. And since we folded it over, we can go ahead and just slide our pencil in through here. Just like that. And 
and it's going to hang down in the jar just like this. And for my flour, I'm going to be putting it in this jar. Make sure your flour doesn't exceed the width of the mouth of your jar. Otherwise, you're going to have to break the jar to get it out. And the stem of this flour is wire, so I can just fold it over and the flour will hang about an inch from the bottom of the jar. Put these to the side. I'm going to take the flour out right here for a second. I'm going to take your jar container, fill it about half full. It's about half full of water. Then I'm going to put it in my pot and heat it up. The stove is on high and I'm going to start dissolving as much salt as I can in this water until I see that the salt doesn't want to dissolve anymore and starts to accumulate on the bottom of the pan. Now, while your solution is still hot, you're going to want to pour it into your jar over a sink. Don't spill anything. You're going to want to fill it to about there. Then take your string and place it right in the center. And wait. I'm going to do the same thing with my flour. And then we just have to wait for the solution to cool off and start crystallizing on your string or flour or whatever you want to crystallize. For salt and borax solutions, you're going to want to wait 6 to 24 hours. For sugar solutions, it's going to take longer, about three to five days, depending on how large you want your crystals. As you can see, our crystals are about done growing. It's been 24 hours. It looks like they're going to get as big as they're going to get. So we're going to go ahead and take them out to dry. As you can see, some crystals have accumulated on the bottom of the jars, which are pretty cool too, but I'm mainly concerned with these here on our string and our flower. For a maximum lifespan, you're going to want to keep your crystals in a cool, dry place. Once your crystals are dry, you can go ahead and check them out. You can observe the very cubic crystal habit of salt, especially on our flower. If you want, you can preserve your crystals with a furniture finish, or you can go ahead and eat your crystals if they're made of sugar. So there you have it, crystallization. I hope I made everything crystal clear for you.